Parents took out a third mortgage to fund my golden child sister's failed business and now want me to quit college to save them out of debt. Hi, everyone. It's really late at night right now so please ignore any mistakes that I make or if I start ranting because I'm in a messed up situation right now. I, 19F, have an older sister, 23F, and she's the golden child for my parents. Full disclosure, I don't think my parents even wanted to have me and have always made it a point to make me feel ignored and unwanted. I was always the less important kid and would discourage me from doing anything that would steal the limelight from my sister. My sister herself is pretty damn ordinary. I'm gonna be blunt and say that she's just not as good as me in any way whatsoever yet she's the one who my parents have always hyped up and supported. I was always better at her in academics, in sports and just outdid her in every area. I think part of it was because I'm really competitive since I wanted the attention and affection that my parents showered my sister with and kept trying to outdo her at everything so that they'd love me but that only made them dislike me more and they'd call me an attention seeker. I think by the time I reached high school, I knew that nothing that I did would make them like me more than my sister and I gave up trying to impress them. I didn't stop outperforming my sister, though. I was still scoring well and taking part in sports and stuff but now, the only difference was that I was doing it for myself and my future and not for my parents. I'd say my sister was also jealous of me and enjoyed the attention that my parents gave her so naturally she couldn't stand it when she realized that only our parents would play favorites and pick her but everyone apart from them could see clearly who the better sibling was. I'd put in my best efforts to make her my friend but she was always too full of herself to even consider being nice to me. So by the time it was time for me to go to college, I wasn't on good terms with anyone from my family and I think we were all really relieved to get rid of each other. I started college two years back and I'm a business major because I've always fancied myself an entrepreneur. I don't have to pay the full tuition either because I got a scholarship and whatever amount I do have to pay is covered by my best friend's dad. My best friend is well aware of my family situation and also knows that they would never give me any money if it meant that I would stand the chance to do better in life than my sister so her dad stepped up and paid for my spot so that I wouldn't have to ask my parents for money and neither would I have to get a student loan. And 60% of my tuition has been waived off because of the scholarship anyway so it's not a lot of money that he has to spend but I'm still really grateful to him. I obviously do plan on returning the money to him eventually when I have the means to but for now, he's the one who's handling my education as well as his own daughters. They're really rich too unlike my own family so it's not a problem for them and I'm really lucky that they're so generous, unlike my parents. My parents think I'm studying here for free because I told them that 100% of my tuition would be waived off and they were greatly relieved because they wouldn't have to spend a single dime on my education and could continue spoiling their eldest daughter. I'm also working a part-time job as a tutor to cover other expenses and I get by somehow. I have to live frugally but since my accommodation and food are taken care of by the college since I live on campus, I don't have much to worry about. My family is not very financially stable and my parents have already had to mortgage all their jewelry and my grandpa's house four years ago to be able to fund their textile business and while it helped a little, they're still not doing as well as they'd like to. They don't let me have a say or advise them either so I can't help them. I used to be really paranoid about their debts until I read somewhere that since I'm not a cosigner on their debts, I'm not gonna inherit it either and since then, I've stopped caring because they don't want my help and I don't want to waste my time helping people who don't respect me or my business acumen. Yesterday, however, I received a call from my parents in the afternoon where they told me that my sister was in trouble and so were they and they needed my help to bail them out of this. Apparently, my parents had mortgaged the house they currently resided in almost a year ago to find my sister's bakery. My sister had no idea how to run a business since she'd never gone to college and neither was she the good at baking either so I don't know why any of them thought it was a good idea. They'd never told me about the loan and I wasn't interested in where they got the money from to help her start her business so I never found out about the mortgage until they told me themselves. Now, they demanded that I come back and help them handle all their accounts and run their business because my sister had to shut hers down since it wasn't making any money. They wanted me to start working full time so that I could contribute to the family and bail them out as well as join the family business to manage it. They actually expected me to quit college so that I could do all of this and said to me in a very matter of fact voice as if this was a normal demand to make. When I asked them why exactly would I quit college for their sake, they told me that as a member of this family, I owed it to them. Since I wouldn't be able to go to college, run the family business, and work a second job all at once, I had to quit one thing and they thought college was the most obvious option since it required me to stay away from home anyway and would be one less obstacle in my way. I was actually speechless that they were saying all that so casually as if they weren't just asking me to sacrifice my future because they were stupid and had no idea how to manage their money. I lost it while my dad was telling me that my sister needed my help and if I didn't want to lose my home, then I needed to come back right away and get to work. The sheer audacity of that got under my skin and I ended up telling him that I didn't owe them anything and that what happened to him or my mom or my sister was none of my business because I didn't think of them as my family at all. They'd never treated me like their own and had always made me feel bad about myself and now when they needed my help, they wanted to play happy family all of a sudden. When my dad argued saying that even if I didn't want to come back for the sake of my family, I could at least come back for the sake of the place I'd called home for the past 20 years but that place was never my home. 
It was nothing more than a house for me and that's what I told him before disconnecting the call and blocking my family everywhere. I'd still even bother to keep in touch with them because I'd hope that someday they'd change but it was as clear as day to me now that that day would never come and I was sick of waiting for them to be decent people. I was in a horrible mood the entire day and didn't attend any classes and neither did I speak to anyone because I was and still am feeling a lot of things all at once. I feel really angry that my parents not only wanted but even expected me to give up my future and my dreams just because my sister had messed up big time and so had they honestly. But I also feel so weirdly guilty for turning my back on them knowing that I'm fully capable of helping them. I don't know where this guilt is even coming from and I don't know what to do about this either. It's been a day and I thought I'd feel better eventually but I still feel like crap. The last time I saw my family was last Christmas and we had a decent time. I didn't enjoy myself but they weren't picking on me and my sister was civil to me as well but now I think it was all an act because they knew that they'd need my help at some point. I just feel so weird and horrible. I haven't spoken to anyone about this, not even my best friend because I don't even know where to start. I guess the reason I'm here is because I really could do with some reassurance that I'm not in the wrong here. So Ida for abandoning my family when they needed my help after they mistreated me my entire life? Update 1, hi, everyone. I don't know where exactly to begin but I really just want to thank everyone who validated my feelings and reassured me that I wasn't being selfish here. I've been thinking about this a lot and I don't know why my parents would even think that I would do what they asked of me after all that they'd put me through. And I can't believe that I skipped one whole day of classes just because of this bullcrap. I guess that's the part that I regret the most right now, lol. It's been three days since then and I haven't heard from them yet. I don't know what they're up to and I don't care either as long as they don't bother me again. I have a lot to worry about already and I don't need more of it. I told my best friend about what my parents told me and she's honestly so sweet that she offered to help me out instantly but I told her that I was alright and had nothing to worry about. The only thing I wanted from her was emotional support and some reassurance that everything would be alright because honestly, my mental health had just gone for a toss after that day. It's not my family that I'm worried about but it's myself. I probably won't have a home to go back to once I'm out of college and even though I know my friends would be willing to help me out, I don't think I want to constantly have to rely on my friends. I have to work twice as hard now to make sure that I graduate top of my class and land a well-paying job as soon as I'm out of college because I really can't afford to slack off right now. I've been driving myself nuts with anxiety about the future and I can't get myself to stop even though I know I can't really control what's going to happen and all I can do is give my best. Ugh, I just wish my family wasn't awful like this. Update 2 so my family showed up at college today and I was shocked that they'd even had the audacity to turn up here after what they'd done. They said that they wanted to take me out for lunch and discuss certain things with me. We were in the lobby and I didn't want to have a dramatic showdown in front of all my friends so I agreed to go with them, just so that they'd leave me alone. I didn't trust them though so I said that I'd choose the place and I picked a diner that I usually went to whenever I felt like having something other than the food from the cafeteria. The owners knew me really well so I knew that I'd count on them to help me out if my family tried anything funny. When I went there, I did see the man who owned the restaurant as well working at the counter so I knew I was safe and I even waved at him to let him know I was there. Once we were sitting, they told me to order some food but I refused to because I just didn't feel like eating with them and I'd rather go hungry but they insisted so I ordered a lemonade but no food. They ordered full meals for themselves and while we waited for the food to come, they got to the purpose of their little visit and told me that they were there to talk about the financial crisis they were facing which I already knew. Once again, they told me to reconsider what they'd asked me earlier, and once again, I had to tell them that I wasn't quitting college to help them with all their loans because they hadn't consulted me or included me in the discussions before making those decisions so now it wasn't my responsibility anymore. My sister got agitated and started accusing me of being jealous of her which is why I was refusing to help them out which was laughable since she literally had nothing that could make me feel jealous. She was the one who'd always been insecure because of me and not the other way around. Speaking of, a lot of you said that I sounded bitter and resentful while talking about my sister in the first post and I just want to touch on that before I continue. So yes, I most certainly did sound that way and it's because I am bitter and resentful. She was always favored over me even though she never did anything to deserve the preferential treatment and I was always pushed aside because of her. I think anyone else in my place would have felt the same way. But anyway, my mother managed to shush my sister, and then came the emotional blackmail. My parents started talking about how the only reason I was even able to go to college was because they educated me and made sure that I had everything I needed to cinch a spot in a good college once it was time. That was the bare minimum that they could have done for a child that they chose to bring into the world and let's not forget that what they were saying was required by the law so it's not as if they were doing me a favor. I told them that I wasn't doing anything for them and that was my final decision so they might as well go back home and leave me alone. I told them that if they came back here then I'd report them to security and the cops as well. My dad got really mad and almost looked like he was going to yell at me right there but my mom stopped him and gave me a nasty and disgusted look before saying that they were ashamed of me and that I was nothing but a disappointment to them. Then they left without even waiting for the food they'd ordered and of course, they didn't even pay for it. When I asked them about it, my sister was the only one who looked back and said that I could pay for it since this place was my choice anyway, and then walked out smiling smugly. 
I was really upset and even though I'd tried my very best to hold it together for these past few days, I just couldn't anymore. My parents and sister were just the worst and it was clear now that they would leave no stone unturned to make me feel like crap about myself. I was devastated and I hate to admit it but my mom's words really stung. They'd called me a disappointment just because I refused to be trampled over by them. I tried to push down my feelings but I couldn't anymore and after they left, I broke down in the diner itself and it wasn't even silent tears but a full-blown breakdown. It was really embarrassing but I just couldn't stop myself and the tears just kept coming while I hiccuped and in a few seconds, everyone there was looking at me. I tried to get up and leave but the owner's wife who also knew me came by my booth, grabbed my arm, and led me behind the counter and I let her because I just didn't know what else to do. She and her husband sat with me, consoled me, and made sure that I stopped crying. They let the other waiters take charge and I was so grateful that they were being so helpful even though I was having a breakdown in their diner and disturbing all their other guests. When they asked me what was wrong, I tried to explain but I could barely even speak because I was so overwhelmed and so I just told them the short version, that my parents and I had a fight and they left without paying. They must have known that there was more to it but didn't push seeing how I was in a really bad space then. The owner told me that they could pack all the food that they prepared and I didn't need to pay for it either. Of course, I'm gonna pay them back because it was a crap load of food but I'm really thankful that they didn't bother me about it and even called a cab for me to send me back to college and paid for that out of their own pockets. It's really because of the kindness and warmth that other people in my life have shown me that I've not completely lost my mind yet. Once I got back to my dorm room, I called my best friend and asked her if she could put me in touch with a lawyer as soon as possible and explain what had happened today. I was afraid that if my parents were willing to come all the way to my college just to harass me then there really was no telling what other shenanigans they might get up to now since I'd already refused to help them. They had nothing to lose now and would probably try even harder to bother me and get under my skin. I had to do something to prevent that from happening and so I got my best friend involved. When I told her what had happened today, she told me that she'd visit me with her father and their family lawyer as soon as they could and that I didn't need to worry about anything. So I feel like I can finally relax a little because I know she'll help me out. I feel immensely guilty for bothering her and her dad so often but I have nowhere else to go and nobody else to look to. At least I'm fortunate enough to have found such a great friend with an equally amazing father who's more than willing to step up and do what my own father never would have. I really can't wait to see them tomorrow because my best friend's presence is enough to calm me down. She's been my friend since kindergarten and knows me better than anyone and is aware of how much I struggle with anxiety so she always tries to keep me relaxed. She's like my own personal anxiety pill and I love her the most. Her dad is just like her and is literally the best example of what a father should be like. I'd say that they're more like family to me than my own parents and sister have ever been. In fact, even the couple who own the diner are kinder and they've just known me for a year. I hate my family and I really wish I hadn't been born in their house. At this point, I won't even call them greedy or mean but just plain cruel because they really don't care about what they put others through as long as they're good. I really wish that they suffer more honestly because now it's just their bad karma that's finally getting to them. I wish nothing but the worst for them, especially after what they did to me today. Today was just unforgivable. Update 3, I've been kind of busy with work and a lot of other things so I haven't been active here but again, thank you guys so, so much for your kind words. I'm doing a lot better now and I have also started therapy to deal with my emotions because I realized that the things that were happening to me weren't normal and just because I'd been facing these things all my life didn't make it all fine all of a sudden. I'd also been stressed about my future and I felt like I'd fall really sick if this continued so my best friend and her dad made me start therapy which I'm grateful for. They also put me in touch with their lawyer when they visited me around 3 weeks back and were filing a restraining order against them in a few days. The plan is to get myself legally estranged from them altogether in the long run. Three weeks back, when my best friend and her dad visited me a day after my parents dropped by, I was a total mess and an emotional wreck, to say the least, but their presence really helped me. Her dad reassured me that I had nothing to worry about as long as I had them by her side and even said that I was as good as his own daughter now. My best friend doesn't have a mother since she'd passed away a few months after my friend was born but they told me that if she was ever to have a sister, I'd be the kind of person they'd expect her to be. That touched me and alleviated a lot of the guilt that I'd been feeling. They reassured me that I wasn't a burden on them never had been and they were more than happy to stand by me. I spoke to their lawyer and the next day, unfortunately, her dad and the lawyer had to go back to work but my best friend stayed with me for a few days and we had a ton of fun. She made everything easier and for a few days, I was able to forget everything about my family. She was also the one who forced me to look for therapists near me and even made me book my first session. I've been attending two sessions every week since then and I'm still a long way from being completely fine but this is a start. My family hasn't tried to get in touch with me since the last time but just to be on the safe side, we're still filing for a restraining order because I really don't trust them, and neither do I feel safe around them. All I can say right now is that I'm really grateful for all that I do have and I hope things get better here onwards. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Brought ice cream to surprise my GF but ended up catching her in bed with another man and she yelled at me instead of apologizing. I've dated this lovely lady for about 2 years and she's meant the world to me. 
We've been two peas in a pod and I adore her completely. We've always had our week or weekend plans committed because we tend to travel quite a bit, so having these plans cemented is an important detail due to the arrangements I make for an outing. Well, several months ago she cancelled on me for a weekend trip. It was sudden and caught me off guard but life happens. She had decided to go to a party with her friends. No big deal and I told her I would pick her up at whatever time she called. I wished her a good time and counted on hearing at the end of the night. The end of the night comes and instead of a come pick up my drunk self, I got an I'm going to stay the night with my friend here. I was fine with this and said to rest up and have a nice night. When we finally meet up again a week later, something was off. My spider sense was tingling and she was looking everywhere but at my face while we were having dinner. I asked her if she was feeling okay or if there was something I could help with, and she said no, and that she just wants to go home. Something was clearly bothering her, but it was a secret and nothing I could say or do was going to let that secret out. Over the next several weeks, more plans of ours were cancelled and were replaced with her going to her friends to hang out for drinks. I actually tried to invite myself along to one of these excursions but she insisted that I was going to be bored and to find something else to keep myself occupied. This puts me on full alert. It bothered me quite a bit because this had been happening often lately. I don't know what the next level of having a spider sense tingle is. But I was definitely on that next level. A week or so later she bails on our plans again for our Saturday. She tells me she's hanging out with her drinking friend at the farmer's market and maybe her and I can get together later that night. Well shucks. It takes me 10 minutes to get to the market and I decide that I should put on my investigation hat and see what's going on. I do not tell her I'm on my way. Upon arrival to the market, I take a look around and I can't find this girl. I look everywhere. I sent her a message saying hey, I happen to be at the market too. Where are you? My phone blows up with all kinds of questions, where did you park? What direction are you in? What shop are you by? I gave her the details, and 10 minutes later she's standing in front of me. With perfume on. She never wears perfume. I ask where her friends are as it would be good to say hi and she tells me that her friends all left to get lunch. My question, dear reddit, is how do I get to the bottom of this? What do I ask her? Am I imagining things or is something up? Am I reading things that aren't there? Update, first off, I want to say thanks to the advice everyone had given. There were a few thoughts that resonated that I appreciate. Secondly, get your popcorn. I know we all like a good story, and this is somewhat therapeutic for me. This all happened a few days ago and it took me a bit to digest everything. Quite a bit of advice was around direct confrontation and asking her what the heck was going on. After numerous ignored phone calls and text messages she finally decided to pick up her phone. She apologized and said her phone died and she didn't realize it until it was too late. I started in right away with that she had previously sent me a message non-nonchalantly that she just wasn't feeling it between us. After that message, we talked and she said she was just feeling stressed and was taking it out on me. Understandable. Stress happens. So my next question was this, your friend had told me that you were seeing someone else. What's going on? Do you want to break up? Her answer? What? WHO said that? Oh my god. Who said that? Oh my gosh. I'm so tired of all these rumors about me. Who said that? She went on like this for quite a while. What struck me was that she was more concerned about someone ratting her out than the accusations. She assured me over and over that no she did not want to break up and then started making me feel awful that I would make these statements towards her. Didn't I know how she felt about me? That I was saying this made her feel like I didn't trust her. I suddenly felt like the worst person in the world. She also pleaded with me to give up who it was that said this, but I wasn't budging on that. In the end, she said she was having an emotional, stressful day and just wanted to relax and we would talk later, maybe over the weekend. After taking in the advice from here, I felt like she was misdirecting. I sat there in a mix of feeling like something was amiss, and feeling awful that I just accused my beautiful girlfriend of cheating on me. I felt terrible. I sat for a bit, feeling like I just put this huge crack in our relationship. I love her to pieces. I needed to go apologize. I hopped in my car and drove the hour to her city and decided to get her a quart of her favorite chocolate ice cream on my way there. When I stopped into the shop to pick up this treat, I run right smack into her daughter hanging out with her boyfriend. They are both in college, doing night classes and just got out of school and wanted a treat. We were chit-chatting and she was going to be staying at her BF for the night, but forgot one of her workbooks and needed to stop at the house real quick to pick it up. After chatting, the daughter's BF took off and we both drove up to my GF house. I pulled into the street because they have assigned parking at her unit. Her daughter actually pulled up behind me instead of her own spot and when we got out I said, what's up, neighbor took your spot again? As we walked up to the door. No. That's not my neighbor's car. I don't know if it was the way she said it or her sigh afterwards or what, but suddenly it felt like my heart just sank. I knew what we were going to find, but I was hoping for anything but that. Her daughter and I both shuffled through the door and stopped immediately in the entryway. We could just hear them. There's no mistaking it. You know the sound, rhythmic thumping and moaning with little exclamations of pleasure. The bedroom was right across from us. Her daughter looked at me with her eyes as big as saucers and just goes oh my god. I'm so sorry. 
At this moment it felt like I was living outside my body. It's hard to explain but suddenly it was like I was just a person watching actions happen. I couldn't really feel anything and I didn't know what to do. Here I am. Standing here. With a quart of ice cream while my GF is getting railed in her bedroom. I had no idea how to proceed. My whole body just felt like I couldn't control it. Her daughter suddenly just screams mom. What the F? That sounded like a cross between a banshee wail and a fire truck siren. My GF actually ran out of the bedroom, bared and all, possibly thinking there was some emergency. Maybe motherly instincts that something bad just happened. I don't know. She started to formulate words but fell silent as soon as she saw the two of us standing there. Eventually a stream of words fell out of her mouth, oh my god. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. What are you doing here? She kept repeating it over and over until she ran back into the bedroom. I still stood there. Shocked. Still having an out-of-body experience. I don't know how much time passed. Seconds or hours. It blurs. She came out clothed in her pajamas and was talking to whoever it was on the other side of the bedroom door. My GF, X now, started yelling at her daughter and I about why we were in the house. I think the realization of everything was suddenly starting to hit her because she started crying and making unintelligible noises. Her daughter starts to scream at her about how could you do this? And you did it again? At this point. I had seen enough. I couldn't even look at her anymore. Everything was numb and my ears felt like they were ringing. My body still wasn't my own. I walked over to her kitchen table and put down the ice cream saying, I know you get hungry after sex. So here's some ice cream. And walked out the door. She started sobbing, no but it I just kept walking and drove home. That was a few days ago. I didn't go to work the next day. My phone has been blown up. I have not replied. For your reading pleasure here are some of my favorite messages, if we had spent more time together it wouldn't have happened. It doesn't mean anything. You know that I love you. If you cared anything about us or our relationship you would talk to me. Are you ignoring me? Please I have lots of pleases. If you cared, we would be able to work this out. It goes on and on. Right now I still feel kinda numb. I just don't understand how or why this happened. I gave this girl and her family so much and my all and it didn't even matter. I provided for them when times were tough and did so much to make our lives good. I know I shouldn't feel this way, but I feel like I don't mean anything or that I can't make someone happy now. It's frustrating. I know I'll get over it in time but it definitely hurts. I don't understand why or how this could happen. We were so good too. So many questions I want to ask her, but I'm forcing myself to not have contact with her and just going to move on. In retrospect I wish I kept the ice cream. 